Thank you very much, Christian. We are together with Christian Fennets. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for watching me. When you think about a musical project, how much you think about the architecture of the sound itself, the elements you use, the instruments, and how much you think about the effect on the audience? Actually, not so much. I start from scratch. I start building up um, sounds that I've been developing, and um, after a while it gets into the process of composing with these sounds that I have found. And only later, in the mix, maybe I think about what impact this could make to an audience, and if it could be touching, or if it could be frightening, or if it could be enlightening, or something like that. so-called glitch music, a uh, term that is referred to part of your music, is accepting the error as part of the general aesthetics. How do you work with that issue nowadays? How do you use uncertainties, mistakes, and also unplanned and spontaneous things in your musical project? Well, um, things like happy accidents or, you know, uh, unforeseen um, situations are still quite important to the work, but I, with the term, term as a glitch I can't really deal with. I mean, this is just one, you know, category of music that people have been uh, putting me in, but I don't consider myself being that. I consider myself being an experimental pop musician, maybe, or something like this. having several collaborations in your career, could you consider any of them as turning points or points of reference in the development of your music? Oh God, <laughs> I had really many and I must say I'm happy with all them. I mean every of these amazing musicians was an inspiration to me. A turning point, I don't know. Um, I think the most, at least in, from my taste, one of the one of the most uh, talented was definitely Jim O'Rourke, because he's such an amazing musician and producer also. At the same time, he's as good in the studio as he is as a guitarist, for example, or a bassist, or a piano player, or a drummer. He can play anything. That was quite impressive, but all the others were equally impressive. I mean, for example, Ryuichi Sakamoto. I learned from him to leave space in my music, you know, and how to take care for the tone itself. It's difficult to pick one, you know. that are moving, touching, or exciting for you in music, not only your music? Hmm. <laughs> Good question. Many things. Um, obviously, I'm more or less a romantic, <laughs> emotional musician, so whenever a piece of music has this inside, it touches me. This could be anything. It could, can be a, a classical piece as well as a jazz piece, a great player, or a good pop song, or, or a noise track, you know, it, it, if it has an emotional energy that touches me, it gets me also, and, and I don't really, I don't really uh, make a difference between the genres, I don't care. to your mind thinking about what you learned 
working and living as a musician? It's very difficult. First, <laughs> it's very hard to survive. I can't recommend it to other people to go that way. But what I love is that I managed to be independent in a way. And I can do what I love. I can travel the world. I can go on the stage. It's very exhausting, you know. It's very... It makes me nervous sometimes. But when you're on stage, it's good. Thank you very much, Christian. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much.